we found that there's only around about 180 individuals of them. Must have been there for hundreds and thousands of years. Actually feeds on bat guano. It was first discovered in 1931. This is Clarius Cavernicola. It only occurs in Aigamas Cave in Namibia. Clarius Cavernicola, or Cave Catfish, is a unique species of freshwater fish found only in Namibia's Ochukoto region in the north-central parts of this vast country, covering a little more than 824,000 square kilometers, with a population of about 2 million people. But to return to the cave-dwelling catfish, it is found only in the Aigamas Cave in the Ochukoto region. Vast dolomite deposits can be found in the Ochukoto region of Namibia, laid down over millions of years by the skeletons of the animals of an ancient sea. Here the water does not soak into the desert sand, but slowly dissolves the dolomite to form huge underground lakes. Other lakes and caves in this area include Lake Harasip, Kinas Lake, Lake Ochukoto and Aigamas Cave, which is home to the catfish Clarius Cavernicola. Aigamas um, actually means big water because of the cave system we have here. It's about two kilometers and you can see that on the on the fault. When you have the satellite picture, you can see that on the fault. And uh, it's very interesting. There were different divers here in the past from France and uh, some of um, um, Europe and so on. And they did some diving, but they never discovered the whole cave system because it's very difficult to enter through the different, the different entrances. There are two entrances right behind us, the one we can see here, one on top, and then there are still uh, two or three on, on top of the hill, on the mountain. So um, we are entering here at this point, it's about 100 meters, and then you have a, a drop about for 10 meters, then you go to the water. You can see the water is only, it's not a lake, you can say it's, it's just a, a fault that was open. The cave was discovered around, uh, or, um, uh, build out for irrigation in the late 30s, beginning of 40s, just before the Second World War. There were two guys from Germany, it was Sievers and Bär. They came from Germany and they found the place, I don't know how, but uh, that's the uh, uh, saying. And they, they installed a steam pump. You will see in front here when we go in, there's a, still the platform, the cement platform, where the where the steam was produced and then was, uh, went down to the um, pumping station. The pumping station is about 100 meters from the entrance. cave-dwelling catfish is a freshwater fish which is classified as critically endangered. That is why the protection of the Aigamas cave itself is vital in the conservation of this species. Fortunately, the present owner is sympathetic to the sensitivity of the cave. Okay, this is Clarius Cavernicola. It only occurs in Aigamas cave in Namibia. It's one of only six species of uh, cave fish that we find in Africa that is blind and white, uh, means unpigmented, it doesn't have any colors, and which is purely restricted to caves and nowhere else. The other two species, or the other five species, three of them are found in the Congo and two of them in Ethiopia. So it's very special that we have a, a endemic fish like this in Namibia, which is very rare. Uh, as I mentioned, it's only occurring in Aigamas Cave, the, that is the only population of it. They have tried to breed it in 
in, uh, in laboratories and in various uh, mm -hmm. uh, museums and aquariums and things like this in captivity and they could never succeed in getting them to reproduce anywhere else. So it's a very special fish. The environment they live in needs to be protected at all costs. In fact, there is also a move to provide legislative protection for this rare and unique fish. Dr. Mare from the Namibian National Museum in Bintuk explains why. We found that there's only around about 180 individuals of them, uh, which means that the, uh, because they're only found in the one single cave, which means if anything happens there, it, it, it will go completely e extinct. It's also very special because it's a catfish. It's the same as the common barbel that we know, Clarius uh, uh, Garapinus, the, to, the, the toothed catfish that we have in all the rivers and also other Carcleria species that we have in the Kavangu and Kaneni rivers. Uh, but because this one is in a, in a cave, it means that somehow it, 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 it was originally established in a cave and it must have been there for hundreds and thousands of years in order to develop to this stage where it is and there's no other close relatives of it now. Very few animals can survive in an environment like this. Yet, these creatures have adapted to their habitat. This cave-dwelling fish feeds on particles that fall into the lake. As you can see from the footage, it's pitch dark. Uh, there's never any light because it's very deep in a cave. Uh, they, the, the, it's very steep-sided, the, the slopes occurring there. So some of the things that we know our fish breed, usually in shallow water, on benches and things like that, it doesn't occur there. So we have no idea where it spawns. And then what is very special of it is its diet because it actually feeds on bat guano. The bats roost in the roof of the cave and there they dung and then their droppings fall into the water and the, the fish goes there and you've got a bit of fish footage is one place where they where some of the bat guano probably served from when people were walking there and the fish immediately attacks it so you can see it's not a very they don't have very very rich food resources and it's very scarce probably one reason why they're so scarce why there's not a very large population inside the cave itself the cave catfish is found only within a single cave in Namibia and is therefore at inherent risk of extinction due to any changes in the environment. It was first discovered in 1931. Strangely enough by somebody, a guy called Carl Jordan, that came here to collect fleas and he visited also the caves and in the process he discovered the, the cave catfish, Clarius carapinus and uh, uh, Clarius cavernicola in Igamas and he also found the Guinness tilapia, uh, tilapia Guinnessana, Guinnessa, which uh, was at that stage only restricted to Guinness. Uh, and since the 1970s they have tried to reproduce them. They have uh, caught populations which was taken to the aquarium in, uh, in Grahamstown at the big ethological institute there, the JLB Smith. They tried to reproduce it there, didn't work. They took them to Pretoria Zoo, there they also tried, didn't work. They took them to Ardap, tried it there. All kinds of, they tried to feed them with bat guano and all kinds of things, keeping them in the dock. It never worked. So yes, uh, we know very, very little about the biology of them because you can only study it in situ, inside the cave. And of course, nobody really wants to do that because there are so few of the fish. So if you do by accident contaminate the water, then you're going to destroy the population. Why is there so little or no research on this rare cave dwelling fish? One of the big problems when you come to research is you need qualified researchers. And I think within the fisheries industry in Namibia there's of course more immediate concerns which, is, which deals with the, uh, with, with, with the commercial exploitation of various fish resources, whether fresh water or, uh, or marine fishes. And when you actually have a unique species like this, Interesting, very interesting biologically, very interesting uh, from, a, from a conservation perspective, but uh, there's not really any real economic benefits. And you know, when you're a country like Namibia, of course, you start looking at the return of it. It should be studied further. Uh, people, as I mentioned, from other institutions who was really interested in the fish as a cave catfish to understand the evolution of cave fishes has tried to study it, but you have to study it in one place. It is very remote and of course we don't really want people to stay there for a long period of time. To view these fish 
special permission is needed from the farm owner and all visits to this cave will be under the close supervision of the landowner. Once you are past the owner, you need a good knowledge of advanced rope climbing techniques and special equipment.